This is Lindsay Clark, your primary instructor for your molecular diagnostics lecture course. And this is part two of our lecture on nucleic acid and chromosome structures. So in this part of the lecture, we are going to focus on RNA and chromosomes. So we will get started. The objectives for today's lecture are, number one, list and describe types of RNA and relate how it is synthesized compared with DNA. Number two, explain how and when a chromosome is formed. Number three, discuss the structure of a chromosome. And number four, define the following terms, genome, gene, allele, genotype, phenotype, and locus. So RNA, we talked about a little bit in part one of this lecture, but we'll go over this again. RNA is a single stranded um, molecule and its function is to translate DNA code into proteins. Now typically RNA is found in the cytoplasm, although some is found in the nucleus, specifically your messenger RNA. RNA is transcribed from DNA in a process that's called transcription. And we are going to talk about that in more detail in a future lecture. The structure of RNA differs from DNA in that it is single-stranded. Its pentose sugar is ribose and it contains uracil instead of thymine. RNA is also smaller than DNA and it contains tens to one thousands of nucleotides rather than millions like in DNA. It is also easily degraded where DNA is really more stable. So in the image of ribose, the pentose sugar that's found in RNA, you can see there that the OH group is in red. And remember, that's how you can tell ribose from deoxyribose. DNA will not have that oxygen in that OH group. It will only have the hydrogen. And there are three types of RNA that are involved in copying the DNA sequence and creating those proteins. The first is messenger RNA, which carries information from DNA to the ribosomes. And the ribosomes, which include our RNA or ribosomal RNA, those make up part of the machinery that's used to make those proteins. And tRNA or transfer RNA, those are responsible for carrying individual amino acids to the ribosome where they are joined together by peptide bonds to make that protein. And remember, proteins are made up of amino acid chains. So as you have those transfer RNAs bring those individual amino acids, they're bonded together with peptide bonds, they create a chain, and then they fold up into proteins. Then they go and do, you know, whatever proteins do. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about chromosomes. So chromosomes are made up of DNA double helix carrying genes that are coiled up to form this chromosome structure. And chromosomes are really only seen during cell division. So generally, DNA in the nucleus exists as chromatin. And then it organizes into chromosomes for cell division. And chromosomes can create an identical copy of themselves during cell division, and those two copies are going to connect to the centromere. In this image, um, the centromere would be where that kind of white glowing section is in the middle. Now, how does DNA get from the double-stranded helix to that supercoiled chromosome shape? Well, first, the DNA begins to coil up. And then it wraps around some proteins that are called histones. And then those further coil around themselves. DNA that's wrapped around histones is referred to as a beads on a string formation. And this structure is called a nucleosome. Now as nucleosomes form, they coil and twist up even more, producing chromatin fibers. Now these chromatin fibers then begin to form really tight loops and they coil up even more and eventually they form that chromosome structure. I want you to know that the DNA wraps around histones which are proteins. The beads on a string structure is called a nucleosome and nucleosomes coil up to form chromatin 
which then coils into chromosomes. And also remember that DNA usually exists as chromatin in the nucleus and really only organizes into chromosomes during DNA replication, during that cell division. So this image here to the left shows chromatin in the nucleus. And while it may look like it, it is in fact not ramen noodles. Now, think about when you look at white blood cells, and especially when you look at immature white blood cells. So see the image here. One way that we learn to distinguish between immature white blood cells is to look at the nucleus and observe the chromatin, right? So we ask ourselves, is the chromatin in the nucleus fine? Is it coarse, condensed, is it clumped? And this is a good way to remember how DNA normally exists in the cell. When you look at white blood cells, you don't normally see chromosomes. And when you do see chromosomes, you can tell immediately that that cell is in the middle of cell division, right? So think about if I were to ask you how DNA normally exists in the cell, what do you normally see when you look at those cells? You don't see chromosomes, you see chromatin. Switching gears again, let's talk about some terms that you will need to know throughout this course. So a karyotype is an individual's collection of chromosomes, and we have 23 pairs or 46 individual chromosomes. Now these chromosomes can be visualized when a cell is in metaphase, and it has a special imaging and, and staining technique. And the laboratory technique for imaging those chromosomes is also commonly referred to as a karyotype. So this imaging is generally done to look for abnormalities in chromosomes. And also, these are actual sour gummy worms. So there's some instructors that have used these to teach kids um, about chromosomes. How wonderful is that? So next, the genotype. Genotype is the genetic DNA composition of an organism. And it includes the heterozygous and homozygous genes that you inherit from mom and dad. Now, phenotype, on the other hand, is the physical appearance of an organism. So remember, genotype is the genetic composition. Phenotype is the physical appearance. So an example here, we have these trees, one tall and one dwarf. So the tall tree, you can see, has a genotype of big T, big T. Its phenotype is tall. And the dwarf tree has a genotype of little t, little t, and a phenotype of dwarf. Now, if we had another tree and that had a genotype of big t, little t, it would still have a phenotype of tall because big t codes for tall and it's dominant. But that's an example of the difference between genotype and phenotype. The term locus is defined as a site or location of a gene on a chromosome. Say we have a chromosome as seen in this image on the left, and that blue band at the top represents a gene located in that spot that codes for eye color. Now that would be the locus for that particular gene. An allele is just different versions of the same gene. For example, we have a chromosome in the image on the right, and this is chromosome 2. And you can see one is inherited from mother and one is inherited from father. And the pink bands represent the gene that codes for collagen. There is an allele from mom and allele from dad. Both are genes that code for collagen. To summarize this part of the lecture, we talked about RNA, chromosomes, and terms that you need to know. We discussed the structure of RNA, differences between RNA and DNA, and we listed three types of RNA. Then we talked about how DNA coils up to form chromosomes, and we reviewed the function of chromosomes. And finally, we defined some important terms such as karyotype, locus, allele, and so on. So that brings us to the end of this lecture. I know that this can be a lot of information, so please, if you guys have any questions at all, I can be reached at this email or phone number listed here. Do not hesitate to let me know if you need any help at all.